26 minutes past seven. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We'll start off today with this development in the aviation sector. Of course, you heard about the alleged uh, corruption going on in that ministry. Paul Utho joins us this morning. He's a public affairs analyst. Well, and I thank you for coming on today. Well, very interesting developments in the aviation sector. First of all, you had this plane crashes, and then you have these allegations of uh, corrupt practices about this bulletproof cars being bought in, uh, for the Minister of Aviation, and then you have by Courtney suing fine, and she doesn't rain, but it pours in that sector. Is this how the cookie crumbles? What do you think about these developments? Well, I think, number one, it's a very disturbing news, um, disturbing and worrisome in the sense that um, in this month alone, we've had four incidences in that sector. And um, when you look at the developments over the years, you keep wondering why this particular sector, um, with all the investments we hear going into this particular sector, you would have thought that by now we would have gotten it right. But it seems that we're going around in circles and the same things keep happening over and over and over again. When this developing story yeah. came up, one would have thought it was just a flash in the pan, it was just something out of nowhere. But for, fan to, for NCAA to even come out to try to justify why bulletproof cars should be bought for the minister makes you even begin to think that there is something really, really wrong in the system. If we were talking about the Minister of Defense, I would have said, okay, maybe some justifiable reasons. But for the Minister of Aviation, is it that she doesn't um, fly anymore? Is it that she prefers to go by road now? Well, the Minister of Aviation only should go by air. Or she <laughs> no, be, I'm not saying she should, she go, I'm, I'm not saying she should only go by air. Mm -hmm. But you know, it becomes so worrisome when you're talking of um, bulletproof cars for a Minister of Aviation. What is the threat to life? The life of 160 million Nigerians are, are threatened every day, insecurity and what have you. And then you have a situation where you are spending 255 million naira for two bulletproof cars for an individual. And then you begin to, uh, certain questions begin to arise. Where is that money coming from? I think we have to get something straight here because uh, they, they say it's not for, for, for an individual, but for the ministry or for the agency. Who is the head of the ministry? Who else is going to use the vehicle? In case they have visitors. Who, who, is, uh, who, is, who is after the visitors? Who is, I mean, you know, that's why I say sometimes some of these things, they feel maybe they are talking to kindergarten kids in, in, in nursery school or something. If you have visitors in the aviation sector who are coming into this country to make investment, who wants to threaten their life, who wants to kill them, who wants to go after them? You know, let's take a look at this. I mean, we do know that there have been some attempt to renovate our airports to, you know, change the look of how, you know, how they've been in the last 30 years. And some people might say that you might be doing that, she might be doing that at a risk to her life. Do you see any risk, you know, do you think that because of the work that she's undertaking in that particular area, there could be some risks to her life? We I saw that. With, let's, take a, let's take an example from uh, former NAFDAQ DG. Dora Kunyili. She was Director General of a drug, Food and Drug Agency, yet there were threats to her life. These are two different issues. In, the, in, the, in NAVDAQ, it's a different ballgame entirely in the sense that you had people that were in that sector who were used to some form of activities and she was stepping on toes. Talking about renovation of airports, who is benefiting from it? If she does something right in that sector, the entire Nigerian populace benefits from it. There is nobody that is benefiting from the dilapidated state. Of, you, you think so? I, I know so. I know so in the sense that if the conveyor belt in the airport is not working, it is you and I that feel the brunt. And if it is working, we are happy. You and I will travel out of this country. We see things work. People want to see things work. It's the same way if drugs were good in the market. You and no, I get to enjoy it. But they if they're bad, you they and I die. They working. We make somebody pick up a gun to threaten the life of the well, minister of aviation. We don't know. I mean, these are just thoughts. And then when you talk about the renovations, are we talking about aesthetics of buildings? 
outside. Was it aesthetics that was done, do you think? Well, when you look at some of them, you see some things outside, and when you go inside, you see a different thing inside. You look at the toilets, you look at the facilities inside. Some of them are not justified. When you look at the huge sum of money that it's, you know, we come out with, the figures that we come out with to say are spent on renovating these this, this airports. But for you, uh, about these cars, I mean, you see Vanga tell you 250 million cars, reps will come into it. Is it the price tag on the vehicles or that it was procured at all? Two things. Um, when, let me take you back to a situation that is happening now where uh, youths, the future of this country, have been at home for more than three months. And there are demands from ASU to fix that sector. And then you come up with a figure like this and with an issue like this. It makes you begin to wonder, is ASU not justified for demanding for such, such an amount of money? Two things are here. You're talking about the amount. You're talking about the cars. Like I've just said, I don't think it's justified to have those cars. Some figures have come out to say those cars were supposed to cost 75 million each, not what we have here. So somewhere along the line, whether it was inflated or not inflated, it still stands to be, to be seen that it is not justified to get bulletproof cars for this ministry at this point in time, especially when NCA has you know, complained over time about funds in that sector to fix so many things.